Well, good morning, everybody. Ebony, happy to have you here. I'm glad that you guys survived the hurricane. Um, we are back to the study of the book Between Heaven and Earth. Um, and as I usually do, let me share last month's study. Uh, it was a long chapter last month, so we did only one chapter, which was 29, which was Julio's reincarnation. And uh, we learned of the spontaneity of psychosomatic restriction in a common reincarnation process. Common meaning most of the reincarnation processes follow the natural law, don't need any special attention from the spiritual benefactors. Uh, then Clarencio explains about the biological shock experienced by the spirit during both reincarnation and discarnation and explain the issue of psychosomatic reduction of the reincarnate, meaning how the spiritual, uh, perispiritual body of the reincarnating uh, spirit works. Um, then we learn about the phases of fetal development, a rapid recapitulation of the evolutionary stages already undergone, undergone by the being meaning. When we go through the uh, to the reincarnation process, as our uh, new physical body develops, we go through all the evolutionary stages that have been already achieved by the reincarnating spirit. Um, then. Uh, it, uh, they asked Clarencio if the organogenic principles that operate in the reincarnation of human spirit also function on animals. And Clarencio explains that along the infinite lines of instinct, intelligence, reason, and sublimation, we are all connected to the law of rebirth as an inalienable condition of progress. Um, and then uh, the, the question if all these incarnated, discarnated children require a more or less extended period to demonstrate mental growth as in common existence. We studied that. We talked a little bit about the, the discarnated children in the spiritual world. Then the limits of the law of bio biological inheritance in Julius' reincarnation confined to the plan of necessary trials for his spirit, what he needs for his future reincarnation and what he's going to carry from uh, his previous incarnation, how a new body forms and the maladjustments the spirit brings when reincarnating. Okay. Now, uh, not for this next chapter, the first one, but for the second one that we're going to study today, it's good for us to remember who is who uh, in this uh, story, right? Because we are going to uh, revisit Mario that was Stevis in the previous incarnation and we are going to revisit Antonina who as we have met before has four children in this reincarnation uh, one of them Marcus is back in the spiritual world uh, we visited him with her in a previous chapter she has three kids incarnated kids uh, she was Lola in a previous incarnation, and we see that uh, Esteves, uh, Armando, who is Amaro, Zumira's husband in this incarnation, they fought for the love of Lola Ibaruri, who is now Antonina reincarnated, and we had the presence of Leonardo, his, her grandfather in, the, in this incarnation, and also a past uh, participant of uh, this uh, family family drama that uh, we are studying. So just remember that. Mario, Davis, Antonina, Lola in uh, previous incarnations, we're going to revisit them. Amaro and Zumira, we are, Zumira is the one that is pregnant with uh, Julio again, okay? Uh, any questions here? Okay, so quest, uh, chapter, 30, the struggle to be reborn. This chapter will deal with the pregnancy and a lot of the physical aspects of the pregnancy. So, uh, you know, Elmo will be active in uh, explaining the, any medical necessities that we need to learn more about. 
Okay. Uh, Soraida, please. Okay. The struggle to be reborn. One month had gone quickly by concerning the events we have been narrating. When Odelia came looking for us, pleading for help, she was downcast, troubled. For some unknown reason, Zumila had come down with a bad case of tonsillitis. She was suffering dread dreadfully. Odelia said that she had been watching over her six days now. She had done everything within her power to free her from the illness, but all to no avail. In desperation, she had induced Amaro to summon a doctor, which he did, but the doctor could not figure out what was causing the illness. Since he did not know the true situation of his client, he could endanger her pregnancy with the wrong kind of treatment. Thus, she was begging us for immediate help. It was nighttime when he we headed for Amaro's home. Sumira was in bed, dreadfully ill. Her hair was in disarray. She had bags under her eyes and her face was flushed with fever. She seemed to be waiting for someone who could help her get through the crisis. The superation, the superation of her tonsils was polarizing her breath and causing her unbearable pain. The poor woman could only groan, half suffocated and exhausted. Husband and daughter were doing all they could to encourage her, but Zumila, whom we had left hailed and hardy 30 days ago, was now profoundly despondent. Various medications were all lined up on, an, on a nearby shelf. Our instructor examined her carefully and perceiving how curiosity said, Zumila needs our diligent help. We absolutely have to ensure the success of her mission. He carefully applied magnetics magnetic resources, especially to the areas of the brain and the galtus. The patient improved almost immediately. The circulatory activity had been restored. The fever obeyed, enabling her to rest. She finally got to sleep, which would greatly help her recovery. Okay. Um, there is not much here for me to comment. Um, uh, so Odila is uh, the mother of uh, the, the mother of uh, uh, forgot her name now. Um, she's the one that sent the, the diverted prayer that started the whole process. Uh, so Evelina, uh, she, Evelina. So thank them. So she is now from an obstetrician. She now became the protecting spirit. Uh, the familial spirit that is helping the, the the family and the reincarnation of uh, Julius, who was also her son in in her life and discarnated through uh, drowning. Right. So we are uh, Zumira gets pregnant and uh, she, everything was fine when we left her in last chapter, but now she has come down with a sore, all sorts of. Uh, of physical imbalances and uh, Odila, of course, you know, we, that, that doesn't have, have the knowledge on how to help someone sick comes for, for the help of uh, Clarencio and, uh, and uh, Andrea Luis and Hilario. Okay. Uh, and then he describes, Andrea Luis describes how Zumira was in bed with a uh, ill with a uh, with some uh, inflammation on the on the glottis, right? And um, Clarencio applies uh, applies uh, magnetic resources, meaning spiritual treatment, especially in the areas of the brain and the, the and the glottis, and that caused an immediate improvement on uh, on Zumira. Um, I don't know if you have any medical help here Elmo to to tell us something else no I don't think so she had a very bad case of a sore throat had a severe tonsillitis to make her difficult to breathe and to eat because everything is so inflamed um, the more important comes now it's uh, why the throat okay right any questions here okay let's move on Okay. It's a subtle matter. Uh, so actually, you don't see the top of the page? No, no, 
I'm not seeing that. Hilario asked about the cause of the insidious illness that had manifested so violently, to which Clarencio responded. Okay, now I have it. It's a subtle matter. Besides offering organic service to the reincarnated spirit, the pregnant woman also has to endure a spiritual contact, which almost always is a sacrifice when it involves someone with dark depths of conscience. During gestation, the female organization experiences a variable mental grafting, the thoughts of the being housed within the inner sanctuary envelope her completely, causing significant alterations in her biological cosmos. If the child is, is, is lord of broad evolution and owner of praiseworthy moral qualities, it lends its, it lends its ad aid to the maternal field, flooding, flooding it with sublimated em emotions and rendering the usual painful pregnancy a period of unspeakable hope and joy. But in Julio's case, there are two souls who are on the same evolutionary level, pain off the same depths. They mutually influence each other. The minister paused at length and returned to applying passes, passes to help the patient. Adelia watched him closely. All of us, she seemed the most preoccupied with the lesson. She seemed interested in everything in order to make herself more useful. After a few moments, Clarenzo continued. If Zumila acts decisively in the formation of the boy's new vehicle, he in turn acts vigorously on her, causing disturbing phenomenon in her female constitution. A mutual exchange of impressions is unavoidable, and Julio's throat problems have been impressed on the maternal mind, which reprodu re reproduces them in the body. The current exchange between mother and son is not limited to physical nourishment. It involves the constant interchange of diverse sensations. Okay, I have it now. Zumila's thoughts have a tremendous effort on Julio, just as Julio's have a tremendous effort on her. Their minds are just posed, so to speak, keeping them in constant communion until nature completes its, co its work. From associations such as this process, the so-called signs of birth, certain inner states of the woman affect the fetal principle in some way, marking it for its entire life. This is because the job of motherhood is like a delicate shaping process requiring much care and harmony so that the job may be completed. Then with parental devotion, the minister performed the various magnetic operations on the pelvis cavity, affirming the necessity to help the uterus due to the complex and difficult development of reincarnating Julio. Okay. So here we are deep into the reincarnation process, into the pregnancy, the physical pregnancy that Zumira has uh, been going through, right? So uh, Clarencio talks about uh, the contact between the, the two uh, spirits, right? Let's think about two spirits coming together in a very close relationship for a new uh, for a new physical uh, individual to be born, a spirit reincarnating a newborn baby, mm -hmm. right? So uh, the Clarencio says the pregnant woman has to endure. It's spiritual contact, which is the connection between two peri spirits in a very uh, close way. Um, and that when it involves someone with deaths, which is the case of Julio, right? With that we know that uh, killed himself, tried to poison himself, failed, and then killed himself to drowning, uh, had already paid the uh, readjust through uh, drowning again, uh, having an accident, but still has to go through the reparation of the, the, the self-imposed uh, uh, poisoning that he tried to do in his previous life when, uh, uh, when he was together with, uh, with Amaro and uh, Armando, right? And Mario, who, who was... Uh, incarnated at that time. So 
the thoughts of the being housed with the inner sanctuary envelop her completely. So again, you have a union of thoughts there. And, uh, and of course, that affects the mother. Now, if the child is an evolved spirit, uh, it gives peace to the mother. It helps the mother, uh, giving sublimated emotions. If the, if the child it has some trouble, it, uh, it causes a painful pregnancy. Uh, now, one thing that is very important here, right? Because if we read this, our immediate conclusion is all trouble pregnancy is a trouble spirit. It's not. There are some physical aspects involved also, right? Sometimes difficult pregnancies does not mean that is a less evolved spirit incarnating or a less evolved mother or both. It just sometimes are uh, physical adjustments between the two spirits connecting to each other. The same way when we talk about mediumship, right? When uh, it's not always uh, that uh, a, a disturbed spirit goes for to a to a less evolved medium in a sense. It's just some processes of affinity that allows the spirit to communicate through one medium or another. So, you know, I just want to make it clear here that we're talking about the troubled um, pregnancy here in the case of a spirit and a mother that have issues, but it doesn't really um, apply to all pregnancies. Let's, let's be very careful with that, right? Of course, when, uh, when everything goes well with the pregnancy, the mother feels well, the baby develops well, there is a good chance that there are good spirits, a good spirit reincarnating and the mother and everything, but it does not really uh, guarantee that that's the case uh, every time, okay? Let's be very uh, clear about that. I'll, 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 I'll ask you to for your question, Ebony, in a second. Let me just finish here, thanks. Um, so, um, Clarencio applies passes. Uh, Odila is following them close because she wants to learn, she wants to be helpful, she is protecting the, the family. Now, uh, Julius' throat problems have been impressed on the maternal mind. Again, he is carrying his throat problem to the new reincarnation. And, uh, it's reflecting on Zumira's uh, throat also. So th that's why she's having their pro her problems. Um, and also the other way around, right? Her thoughts has a tremendous effect on Julio. Just as Julio has a tremendous effect on her, their minds are united uh, in a sense, right? So they are both uh, feeling what the others is feeling. And uh, again, the Julius is uh, in in a semi-conscious state or an almost unconscious state, but he carries all his history and his uh, um, use with him that reflects on the mother. So Clarencio then starts applying uh, passes or magnetic operations on the, the region where pregnancy uh really develops which is the pelvic cavity okay uh ebony thank you um we're told here that the reincarnating spirit imprints its mental disposition on the mother and vice versa and um just wondering out aloud if perhaps this process is uh, partly responsible for um, mothers who experience postpartum depression or perhaps even psychosis. Uh, I don't know. I'm just thinking. Yeah, um, we are. We're going to study a lot of the effects of what happens during the pregnancy. So the 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 the, the, the issues uh, later in this chapter, the issues that affect the mother during the pregnancy. But in terms of postpartum depression. Um, I don't know, Elmo, you know anything? Uh, no, I never read, but it opens with this wonderful question. Uh, 
if the postpartum cycle complications could derive or have anything to do with with the now um, absence of that energies that it's used to be in direct direct contact and it's no longer now it's a good question but from this reading you know, we can we, we can create the hypothesis but not make the conclusion yeah okay Elmo, okay, anything, thank you. thanks Ebony. anything to add here uh no not really um I think we co you covered everything. There is nothing really medical, clinical to be discussed here. And the spiritual aspect is really what's more important for us to understand. There is now these two individuals are so integrated together as almost as in a state of codependence of everything, not only physical, but also emotional and everything else. And which being pretty well demonstrated already by our um, sciences without considering the spirit, of course. But uh, that has been demonstrated and tested that there is a, a much greater co correlation of mother and child uh, during pregnancy in this emotional state, what affects the mother, affects the baby, and vice versa that it's very well explained over here and for us it's easier to understand because you consider the spirit but it's also important to remember that it's a two-way road as is make sure to, to explain that two individuals in absolute harmony with no greater debit, debits with the divine laws should have a very easy gestation without any complications and be careful to not assume any complications of of this gestation, meaning that it's a evil spirit or a bad spirit. It may be none of the above. So not be very careful in reaching conclusions here. But um, Ebony, I I'm going to chase the answer to your question, okay? Because I I think it's important. I'm going to ask to see if we can uh, ask some specialists to if we can get an explanation okay um elmo on this this last part that i highlighted the various of magnetic operations on the pelvic cavity nothing really special on this right nothing medical it's just a treatment for the pregnancy itself right yeah, I think so. I think I think it's a good point to that. Uh, Clarence went first to the mother, right? We treat the mother here first. The mother's one is is in serious trouble right now. Let us treat her throat. Let's um, <clears throat> eliminate the problem with her throat first. And we see that in the spirit's book, right? And let's take care of their life that's already established and make sure that the mother stay healthy. Because mommy does, if mom does not do well, baby not gonna do well intra intra uterus, right? So it takes care of the mother first, make sure that the mother can resume proper supply of nutrients and oxygen to the baby first, and then he goes address the baby. And that the pelvic here is a treatment for the babe and for the cocoon where that baby is going right now. It's the the woman's uterus, right? And, and you you understand that that uterus at that time it really belongs to the baby more than to, to the mother. The baby is pretty much in control of it, right? And um, so yeah, that's the point. That is a very important point. Address the mother for the first. Make sure that the mother is well. Then you're going to get out the baby. It's almost like the airplane thing. You know, put the mask on your face first, then you put the mask on on your child. Thanks. Um, any other questions? Okay, let's go slide them. Okay. My colleague perhaps wanted to make that time of fraternity a time of study as far as possible, recalled a few of his own experiences as a doctor. 
During pregnancy, it's quite common for the woman to experience an exaggerated sensitivity. The transformation of the nervous system under such circumstances is inarguable. Often she displays a decrease in mental vivacity, and she often says things that are really eccentric. There are women who acquire certain antipodes, whereas others indulge in fantasies that are as unexpected as they are unjustifiable. On many occasions, I used to ask myself if in most cases, pregnancy didn't entail temporary insanity. Clarenzo smiled and replied. Your explanation is right on the money. Mm -hmm. A pregnant woman is an individual undergoing a lengthy hypnosis. Her psychic field has been invaded by the incarnating spirit's impression and vibrations. Okay. If, the future, if the future child is not sufficiently balanced before the law, and this is nearly always the case, the maternal mind is susceptible to registering the strangest imbalances because like a medium, she will be transmitting opinions and sensations of the incarnating spirit. It used to trouble me to see the inadvertent aversion of many pregnant women toward their own husbands, remarked Hilario. Yes, that occurs whenever an enemy from the past returns to the flesh in order to pay off debts it owes to the one who will serve as its father. But there are cases, I said, where on the world stage, we see daughters who obviously used to be quite hostile toward their mothers in the remote or recent past, such as the animosity that characterizes their relationship. In these instances, we see that such daughters are much closer to their fathers, living psychically in harmonious association with them, but distant spiritually from their mothers who for futurely do everything they can to break down the barriers that, is, that separate them. Are there obstacles to reincarnation in such cases? Lorenzo gave a significant look and responded, no, they aren't. By being devoted to her husband, the wife easily yields to the needs of the soul returning to the domestic stronghold for regenerative purposes. If this involves someone who has a strong affinity for the head of the home, the husband will be gently encouraged to show more love toward his wife since he feels enveloped by dual forces of attraction. Uh, under this double charge of affinity, he will give much more of himself in attention and care, making his wife's job as mother much easier. Thanks, Sorada. So um, remember that uh, the colleague here, Hilario, was always a doctor, right? When Andre, uh, when Andre Luis meets Hilario for the first time, they feel the affinity to each other because they were both doctors in the in their last incarnation. So Hilario talks here about the uh, the the sensitivity that women experience during their pregnancy. Some women, again, not all of them. Uh, and then he describes that uh, what his experience is of uh, women going through. Uh, you know, through antipathies, fantasies, desires that we all have heard or have seen, right? Um, and then uh, it mentions that uh, if, if uh, pregnancy doesn't uh, produce temporary insanity, which Clarencio smiles, and uh, and then he explain, explains that, uh, yes, he's... he's uh, his thoughts are quite correct because a pregnant woman, uh, it, it's like a, an individual un undergoing a lengthy hyp hypnosis, meaning and there is the influence of the reincarnating spirit. Her psychic field is invaded by the incarnating spirit's impressions and vibrations. So what she's expressing is a mixture of her own feelings and the new uh reincarnating spirit feelings right um and so uh, clarencio explains if the maternal mind is uh, is susceptible to register the imbalances because like a medium she'll be transmitting opinions and sensations of the incarnating spirit and again the comparison between a pregnant and uh, a mediumship is an interesting one again it's a, it's a comparison and it's not the same case because a medium receives a spirit connects very spirit to very spirit through uh, 
uh, on a very short period of time, right? Uh, 10, 15 minutes, or more in cases that uh, the, the medium is writing a book for a longer period of time, but it's always a short period of time compared to a pregnancy, which is normally a nine month connection between the newborn baby, uh, the future baby and the mother. So the comparison, like a medium, med meaning two fairy spirits connected to each other and the medium expressing what the um, spirit, the, the communicating spirit is feeling or, or willing to talk is, is a valid uh, comparison. But again, let's be very careful not to, to say it's the same. It's not the same, far from it. It's just uh, that there are some similarities. And then Hilario asks about the aversion uh, that some women feel when they're pregnant towards their own husband. And, uh, you know, for that, we can understand that if a spirit that is an, a former enemy of the father is, uh, is coming to reincarnate, of course, uh, his or her thoughts can reflect on the, the thoughts of the mother and cause this um, inexplicable for us incarnates uh, reactions that the mother can have towards her husband, okay? Um, and the other way around also, as uh, Andrea Luis uh, remarks here, right? Sometimes we see children uh, that are born and uh, show some some very um, many difficulties toward the mother and very close relationship with the fathers, right? Uh, Freud studied this a lot, right? Uh, of course, Freud didn't uh, include the spiritual aspect. If he did, he would be much further down the, the, his research, but he talks about uh, the, the, the different complexes that children have towards their fathers and mothers, the Oedipal complex, the Electra complex, right? And if we add the spiritual aspect of it, we can, of course, understand much better. So this, um, most of the spirits that are reincarnating, they are reincarnating to readjust with their parents. Not all of them, some of them come to help their parents, but many of them come to readjust either with both parents or with the mother or with the father. And then we see these difficulties that uh, makes them spiritually distant from the mother or from the father. But, uh, you know, um, uh, Andre Luis asked if there is there are obstacles to reincarnation in such cases, meaning if the pregnancy is going to be more difficult, if uh, there is some antipathy from the spirit towards the mother, and uh, and Clarence answers that if the, the woman is uh, devoted to the husband and uh, and uh, yields to the needs of the soul returning to the uh, to to the the home for regenerative purposes, everything should go more smooth or smoothly. Um, and also, the husband will be more attracted to the wife if the spirit that is coming is uh, is connected to the father in a more meaningful way okay so uh right. he uh, the the husband will take much greater care of the the wife making her job much easier that's what Clarencio tells us okay Elmo, anything here no i don't think so um the only comment is that there should be no problems from for for the pregnancy from the mother and the father receptive when they are receptive. But as you see in the case of uh, the reincarnation of Sujus Moon, there could be a difficulty from the other side, you know, from the reincarnating spirit to really be willing to go through the pregnancy uh, as we see in that case of Sujus Moon. Now, I have to reinforce that this pregnancy here is an average, is a common case. What we are seeing here, it's not something outside of the normal. This is what happens commonly. You know, this is the kind of experience that we are. You know, we are 
most of us in depth with one another and expect those kind of things to happen. And the surgical smooth case is an atypical, is a special case. Yeah, that's a good point. We discussed in the last chapter that this is not really, it's not a mission, it's not anything out of the ordinary. It's just a spirit reincarnating to readjust his his own uh, karma, his own uh, challenges, and also for both parents, Samaru and Zumira. There's nothing out of the ordinary here. We are studying it because it's important to study the average cases because it applies to most more cases than, um, than uh, ex special pregnancies. When we study, again, reincarnation of Sigismund in the book Missionaries of the Light, as Elmo said, it's a special case and uh, it's worth reading chapter 13 of Missionaries of the Light. Okay. Any questions here? Okay. Let's finish the chapter. Okay. This clear and logical explanation satisfied us completely. We conversed for a few more minutes in which our instructor gave various instructions to Odilia that she could use in case of emergency. Edified, we returned to our circle of usual work, but only a few days later, Odilia came to us asking for another intervention. Zumila was going through an appalling organic crisis. Uncontrollable vomiting was assailing her ruthlessly. She couldn't keep down even the lightest meal. Her digestive system displayed profound alterations. The doctor couldn't do anything because her stomach was rejecting all his resources. We rushed to offer our assistance. The pregnant woman was, in fact, in a threatening situation. The ongoing nausea was causing the gradual incursion of anemia. Lorenzo, however, applied extensive magnetic passes, promising that the measure would lead to the necessary improvement. Various duties were demanding our presence elsewhere. Even so, after we had said goodbye, Hilario asked the reason for such a phenomenon, which during all his medical experience on earth had never been explained. Hmm. We know that the medical science of the future will help women defend themselves against that sort of organic annoyance, asserted the minister. It will find physiological causes for such conflicts, but the root of the imbalance is essentially spiritual. The maternal organism absorbing emanations from the reincarnating spirit acts as an exhaust mechanism for disintegrating fluids, fluids that are not always pleasant or easily borne by the woman's sensitivity. Hence the reason for such hard to treat cases of nausea. This information provided us with invaluable material to think about. The weeks passed. We insisted on visiting Amaro's home for time to, from time to time, whether asked to or not, until one morning, Odilia came to us acting like a jubilant child, announcing that the boy had returned to the terrestrial light. The small family had decided to give in, to give him once more the name Julio. We joined in her profound joy and with the solidarity of true friends, we went to welcome him. Okay. So uh, here, what happens? She Later, she was having nausea, which is something that we know happens to a lot of pregnant women. Very common, right? Uh, she was vomiting. She wasn't, couldn't keep the meal. She was beginning to develop anemia. Um, Clarencio went there, applied passes, magnetic passes, and uh, told that uh, the measure would lead to the necessary improvement. But the, what, what is interesting is when he explains the cause of nausea, right? That, that, that the medical science of the future will help women defend themselves. And uh, again, we are somewhere in the future. I think Elmo can talk a little bit more what the, the resources are done today to, to, to help with nausea, right? But uh, the explanation, the spiritual explanation of the nausea is very important. Uh, uh, Clarencio tells us that the maternal organism is absorbing emanations from the reincarnating spirit, which is disintegrating its own fluids, right? That, as its very spiritual um, 
form is uh, reducing and getting rid of the unnecessary um, energies or material things, spiritual material things that he needs for the future. It doesn't need for future reincarnation. These fluids that they are uh, uh, expelling are not always pleasant and affect the, the mother sensitivity. And that's the reason for such difficult causes of nausea, because you know the, the physical medicine uh, had no uh, way of of treating spiritual imbalances, right? So, um, little Julio is born again, once again with the name Julio, and uh, the pregnancy ends here, and uh, we start a new uh, a new life. Um, Elmo, here, something. You're on mute, Elmo. Okay, bye. Yeah, so um, we now understand that uh, this, especially the first trimester, um, nausea and not feeling well, it's hormonal overload. We know it is going to pass um ideally is do nothing you know in pregnancy you, usually the goal is to do the least it should be medicine in general right to do the least let the body deal with that in extreme cases that is necessary then we have some medication that helps with zofran but uh, ideal is just wait because we understand now on the physical uh, state point is, is a hormonal overload um, that causes all that nausea and those kind of imbalances and the digestive way of the woman. The most important thing is to have a good prenatal care and make sure that you take your prenatal vitamins, the iron, those things are extremely important for the mother because the baby will you take whatever the baby takes from the mother. You take all the iron, all the calcium, all the magnesium, and you deplete the mom if the mom doesn't, uh, doesn't replace it. Uh, <clears throat> from the spiritual point of view, we received the explanation now. That is, <laughs> I was trying not to ask, I'm not asking, I'm just make a comment, I don't, I don't think anyone has the answer. It was just a comment. What is Zumira's and Julio's you know, spiritual guides protecting spirits in all this case over here? Why the, is uh, Clarence has to come to the rescue at the time? But it's just a, a comment. I don't know. We don't have an answer for this. Okay. Thanks, Elmo. Any additional questions? Okay. So next chapter. It's a new struggle, and um, this chapter, um, there is, it's more of a narration of facts that are going on. Very little uh, things to 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 go deeper, but uh, you know, it goes, uh, it starts to connect, to connect all the loose parts of this story, uh, and as I mentioned before, bringing Mario, uh, the the nurse that uh, we studied. Previously, that was, you know, uh, that was the former uh, boyfriend of Zumira, and then Zumira left him to to marry Amaro, uh, and then it causes all the hatred that Mario carries towards them, and uh, connects also Mario to Antonina, that is former uh, his former uh, passion on the previous existence as Lola Ibaruri. So it's more of the narration, not much to to add here, but we're going to go through to to start connecting the dots on the whole, the whole story. Okay. Okay. A new struggle. Little Julio was growing like a flower of hope in the garden of the home, but he was skinny and sickly. His parents did all they could to assist him appropriately, but no matter what treatment they tried, the dolorous stigma. In his, in his throat persisted. The large sore on the glottis made it hard for him to eat. 
He was given wholesome meals along with mother's milk in order to strengthen him, but to no effect. Nevertheless, in spite of the amount of care he required, he was a true blessing of happiness for his parents and sister. All three sensed in his tender little face a living point of spiritual interlacing. We often held him to our heart as we recalled all the work we had done for him before his return to the world, and we noted the optimistic tenderness with which Odilia, now the family's benevolent familiar spirit, was watching over him as he grew. The little one had already begun to speak in monosyllables on the e eve of his first year when another struggle surfaced. Winter had arrived with a vengeance and a menacing outbreak of the flu was going around. Coughing and the flu was showing up everywhere. When on a day when we had a lot of work to do, Odilia came looking for us once again. The first time she had access to help Zumila. This time it was for Hudu. Assailed by a fearsome case of tonsillitis, he laid in bed exhausted and feverish. We immediately left for the railroader's home. A moist wind was blowing over the oceanic waters of Rio de Janeiro. Heavenly clothed pedestrians in the streets made the city look like a cold place. We arrived quickly at Amaro's home. The scene was alarming. We went into the room where the child was glowing, growing, groaning, half officiated, just when the family physician was conducting a detailed examination. Lorenzo watched everything the doctor was doing. The boy's throat displayed a large patch of whitish leg, and his breathing was labored and wheezy. The instructor shook his head as if he were confronted by an insolvent mystery, and then placed his right hand on the doctor's brow to compel him to think with greater attention. Unable to detect our presence, Zumila and Evelina looked wordily at the doctor, wearily. After a long silence, he told Zumila, I think we'll have to get the help of one of my colleagues right away while you make a phone call to your husband, asking him to come home from work. I'll go get the pediatrician. The afflicted mother had a hard time holding back her tears. Lost in thought, the doctor went out on the street and as Evelina ran to the phone to tell her father what was going on, Zumila, thinking she was alone in the room, embraced the patient and weeping free, freely prayed, Dear God, with much love I received the child you sent me. Please don't take him from me now. Her tears pierced my soul. Due to my emotional state of mind, I could not ask any questions, but Clarenzo, Clarencio, unperturbed as always, stated compassionately, it's an obvious case of diphtheria. The congenital deficiency of the glottis has enabled the bacilla to take hold. Immediate help is critical. The instructor had begun mobilizing powerful resources when the downcast Amaru came into the room. Amaru was trying to encourage Zumira when the doctor and the pediatrician entered the humble residence. Both doctors subjected the boy to a lengthy examination, exchanging impressions in a hushed voice. Apprehensive after suspecting it was a case of coup, the specialist stated that a laboratory analysis was needed and decided to take a sample. As he left, he promised the results within a few hours. He informed the anguished father that he suspected it was croup. However, he reserved the final diagnosis for later. If his hypotheses was, were confirmed, he would send a trustworthy nurse to administer the proper serum. Okay, thanks, Raida. Mm -hmm. Okay, as I mentioned, a lot of descriptions here, not much to, to talk about. Uh, Julio is sick, uh, and again, the 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 problem is the one reflected that he had to go through right in the throat um and he is being helped uh by the family trying to feed him as much as possible but with very little effect and it's interesting that uh the, he mentions here that Odila is now the family's benevolent familiar spirit we are all surrounded by familiar spirits right in this case, you see in this book how an obsessor can become a familiar spirit, which is the case of Odila, which is very interesting. Um, then um, 
uh, she she mentions that uh, he's already developing, uh, but uh, he's going through this uh, uh, sickness, right? And it's funny when they say that uh, you know the, there are, there were cases of uh, uh, of uh, a flu and cough coughing everywhere in Rio de Janeiro. There was it was a cold time, and uh, I know that. Uh, uh, that it's funny because when you mention Rio, right, uh, sixty degrees is, and they are all all uh, dressed up and covered in uh, in um, in coats and everything because sixty degrees is is freezing for those that live in Rio, right, Luisa? Um, Luisa is going there tomorrow, and she's going to go on during the winter, so she may experience that for a couple is of days. Is, is it's, not si it's not 60, it's 70. When it's 68 oh. to 70, people are wearing hats, scarves, boots, <laughs> and freezing. <laughs> Sorry, those there. are the people in Rio. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but so, you know, it was this uh, uh, code uh, winter in Rio and uh, and Julio of course caught, uh, caught uh, the sickness right and uh, then they go to describe uh, what he was feeling he was breathing labored and he was wheezy um, the doctor didn't uh, was trying to help and then decided to call a pediatrician and then uh, Zumira is, is praying for the child and Clarencio mentions that is a case of diphtheria or croup, which is the same thing. And Elmo can explain better the medical aspects of it. Um, but uh, then, uh, you know, the, the doctor promised to send a nurse to administer the proper medicine, the proper serum. And that's what's important here. Uh, he would send a trustworthy nurse to administer the proper serum. Is was what's going to to help us connect with Mario again later in this book. Okay. Help anything here on the diseases or the disease? Uh, yeah, I don't think I need to go deep on that. But um, group is. Is a laryngotracheal inflammation infection. Okay, most often is is viral. Is a um, is a part influ influenza virus most of the time when you have those um, epidemias that go that goes around, you know, especially in the winter. Usually, it's virus, but can be caused by uh, bacteria also. In this case, so Ilari is saying there is bacterial. But more important is not the disease itself, is what you usually say is right here, the tendency of individuals catching different kinds of disease be more prone to get this and that. We see here now there is an, uh, the spiritual genesis for those likelihood of individuals being more prone to this, more prone to that. Again, as a very logical possibility, right? A spirit who is already has its very spirit compromised in that part of the body, you'll be more likely to get disease associated with the part of the body where that very spirit is compromised. And in case of Julio, he will always be at risk to have any of those upper airway, you know, the trachea, the larynx, the tonsils kind of problems because of the compromised part of his petty spirit that deals with that part of the physical body. But group, group uh, today you have vaccine against it. Um, people still get, can get extremely sick and be deadly. If not treated properly. In his case, if it's bacterial, antibiotics should take care of it. Okay, thanks. Right, Soraya. Okay. 
Keeping close watch on the patient, the minister told Hilario and me to go with the pediatrician to offer him all the help we could. We followed him without hesitating. The, dizzle, the drizzle soaked twilight fell rapidly. In just a few minutes, we went through the front door of a large hospital where our friend was to conduct the tests. When we entered the cramped room, we were met with truly stupefying surprise. Mario Silvia in his white lab coat was talking to Antonina, who was holding a pale wheezing, wheezing Liz, Lisbella on her lap. Wheezing Lisbella on her lap. The young woman, whom we had not seen again, had brought the girl to the specialist for consultation. Assisted by Silva, who had obviously been attracted to the visitor through affinity, mother and daughter had access to the private office where the doctor diagnosed the case of pneumonia. Antonina was advised to go home immediately so the girl could be treated. Penicillin had to be administered right away, displaying immense tenderness for the child. Mario stood ready to help her. We would call a taxi and would attend to the case personally. His boss looked at the clock at Aquasis, stating, okay, you can go, but I need your help in a distant neighborhood at 10, at 10 p.m. The young man promised to return on time in a taxi, took the trio to the house we had visited before. In light of this unexpected development, we felt that we needed to consult Clarenzo, Clarencio. When we arrived back at the room where little Julio continued to worsen, he told Clarenzo what had happened. He listened with interest and stated concerned. There's no time to lose. Let's head for Antonina's house. The law is bringing, the law is bringing our friends back together again, and Mario needs to be strengthened to practice forgiveness. The waves of hatred he is emitting can hasten the inevitable work of death in this case. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So... Uh... Uh, Clarencio tells Hilario and Andrea Luis to go with the pediatrician to the hospital. When they enter the hospital, they they find Mario, the uh, the nurse we studied before, uh, that was talking to Antonina, who we also met before when she was uh, taken to the spiritual world to visit her son that discarnated Marcos, right? So... Tonina went to the hospital with her daughter, Lisbella, that was uh, had a case of pneumonia. And, uh, and Mario felt immediately attracted to her. He didn't know why, uh, but he offered help and offered to, to, to take a cab and go to, to her house to help take care and apply the, 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 the medicine needed. Um, he's asked to be back at 10 p.m. And... Um, Andrea Luis goes back to Clarencio, tells what happened, and Clarencio immediately says, let's go to Antonina's house because, you know, the law is bringing our friends back together, meaning Mario, Zumira, Amaro, Antonina. But he said that Mario needs to be strengthened to practice forgiveness because the hatred that he feels towards Zumira and Amaro uh, call, can cause more damage to the already sick boy that, uh, you know, is, uh, as he says here, is an inevitable uh, work of death, meaning Julio, because of his past, is, has to face this challenge, but uh, it doesn't need to be, um, to, to, it, they don't need Mario to, to, uh, to be a factor in uh, increasing the, the chances of death. Okay, so it's just uh, the developments here for us to understand the, the, the connecting dot in the history, right? Anything here, Elmo? No. No. <clears throat> so Mario was Estevez. Estevez is the, the guy who left uh, Uruguay, I guess, and went to Rio after Lola and was um, disappointed, so to say, but trying to get Lola to be with him, right? Yes. He did not commit suicide, right? No. Yes, thank you. No, the, the Julio is the one that committed suicide. Yeah. Mario, no. Mario just uh, was it's in love with Lola and left her. Uh, well, Mario, in that case, uh, Stavis. Stavis left her, went back to Rio, got married, and uh, in the end, uh, 
uh, she was trampled by his uh, his carriage, right, and died. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. It's important to remember what what the past a little bit, right? Yeah. Okay. So we headed there right away. After be having begun treating the bedridden girl, Silva eyed Antonina, wondering where he had seen that tormented Madonna-like profile before. He had the distinct feeling that he knew her from somewhere. Pleasantly surprised, he felt like he was in his own house. The affinity was not only obvious in his own heart, because Antonina and the children surrounded him with attention. Inwardly fascinated, the healthcare worker said out loud that he was feeling a peace that he had not known for a long time. Antonina was overjoyed with smiling. When he found out that Hilario and Enrique loved sports, he struck up an animated conversation about soccer and won their friendship. As she made coffee, Antonina joined in the conversation from time to time in order to bring the kids in line when their speech started to become unconstructive. Only from this friendly conversation did we find out that Antonina had been widowed. Her husband, according to news received from a distant city, had died in an accident and the victim of his own carelessness. Sylvia had looked pleased when he heard, he heard this. He began to show an uncontrollable interest in the life of that welcoming home, which actually seemed to be his. At 8 p.m. sharp, Antonina unaffectedly asked him. Mr. Silva, this evening we are going to have our go home gospel study. Would you care to join us? Incomprehensibly happy, Mario agreed. That evening's meeting was held beside Lisbella's bed. She did not want to miss out on the benefit of the prayers. A glass of pure water was placed on the nightstand. With New Testament in hand and her compa companions already, Antonina asked Enrique to open with prayer. The boy recited the Lord's Prayer and then asked Jesus to heal his, little, his sick little sister. Lorenzo approached a glass of crystalline water and magnetized it for the patient, who seemed remarkably comforted comfort by the prayer she had heard. Then he approached Sylvia, who received radiations from him. Who's going to open the book of this time book this time? asked Hilario with a gleam in his eyes as he looked at the unsuspecting guests. Of course, our friend will do the honors, replied his mother, indicating the healthcare worker. Not knowing how to express the happiness in his heart, Mario took the little book. Clarenzo touched his chest area and hands to influence him to open to the right passage. Trembling somewhat at taking part in a spiritual exercise that was completely new to him and completely unaware of the assistance he was receiving, Mario opened to a particular passage as if at random. And then handed the book to Antonina, who read in an hesitant voice, Matthew 5.25. Make peace with your adversary while you are on the road with him so that he does not hand you over to the judge and the judge hand you over to the official to have you put in prison. Antonina, who seemed most reserved that evening, asked the kids what they thought the passage meant. They eagerly told about some of their experiences at school, affirming that they always felt peace whenever they forgave other kids for hurting them. Lario said that his teacher always smiled in satisfaction whenever he saw Lario's goodwill, and Enrique said, that he had learned from the home gospel study that it was more pleasant to make an effort to live in harmony with everybody. The conversation seemed to seemed in danger of losing steam, but our instructor placed his hand on Antonina's forehead to inspire her to say something appropriate. Hilario, she asked with shining eyes, who would you say an enemy would be? Well, Mom, you have taught us that having an enemy on our pathway is like having a bad sore on our body. That's exactly right, responded the widow with enchanting spontaneity without the fraternity understanding that makes sure that we are always kind to others and without forgiveness that forgets all the bad things that are done to us. Life will be really hard to take. Also, when Jesus gave us today's lesson, he must have thought, that right is not always on our side. We may be offended at times, but truth is we often, we offend others in turn. We need to forgive others so that others will. 
forgive us. When we embrace the idea of the good, we have to do all the poss possibly can to make things right with everyone who we have problems with. By being of service to them so that they view us in a different way. Again, peaceable accord is worth more to us than the most valuable demand because life doesn't end in this world. And it is possible that if we seek justice for ourselves, we may be hardening the blindness of selfishness in our heart and thus may end up dying with afflictive problems. The heart that holds on to rancor is a sickly heart indeed. Feeding, feeding hatred or spite means bringing unnameable moral suffering on ourselves. Silvia, Silva was pale. Those remarks smothered him to the core of his being. He looked so troubled that Antonina, noticing it, said with a smile, you surely don't have an en any enemies, an industrious healthcare giver is obviously a brother to all. Yes, yes, no, I don't have any enemies, stampered Silva, but on his mental screen, on which he was unable to control the occlusion of his me memories, Amaro and Zumila appeared as enemies that, in the depths of his soul, he couldn't forgive. I hate them both. Yes, I hate them, he thought to himself. I could never make peace with such enemies. Still, Antonina's sincerity enchanted him. That young widow and her three kids, seemingly overcoming all the obstacles put in their way, were a real example of how the spirit could be strengthened through sacrifice. He had never seen such ardent, pure faith before, the kind of faith needed for great moral constructions. Above all else, cords of strong affinity were drawing him to this woman, with whom he had felt a tune the moment he laid eyes on her. But no matter how much he combed his memories, he couldn't remember where, how, or when he had known her. Nevertheless, he did feel an indefinable sense of well-being because of what she had said. Gazing tenderly at her, he asked, do you think that we would try to make things right with every sort of enemy? Yes, I do. What if our enemies are such that merely being around them causes anguish? Antonina grasped the fact that some dolorous secret had come to the surface of his conscience as a result of the lesson. So she, so she asked, I believe there are more there are moral sufferings that are almost unbearable, but that prayer is the most effective remedy for our inner troubles. If we are so unfortunate as to have enemies whose presence it troubling presence is troubling to us, we must resort to prayer and ask God to give us strength so that the imbalance will disappear. Then a road to readjustment will appear to our soul. We all need someone else's tolerance at some point in our life. Mario's eyes sparkled. What if hatred overwhelms us even when we don't want it to? He asked worried. No hatred could withstand benevolence and goodwill. Whoever would try to get to know himself will find forgiveness to be very easy. Silva had gone pale again. Antonina guessed that the subject was speaking to his heart and helped by our instructor who was influencing her, she considered. A person with your duties is a missionary of fraternal love. Those who help the sick penetrate human nature and begin to acquire great compassion. Hands that heal cannot wound. Gladio said the closing prayer. Antonino served coffee and a simple cake. The conversation was lively, but the guest looked at the clock and saw it was time to go. He gave instructions to Antonina concerning the sick child's medication and respectfully asked if he could come back the next day, not only to check on Lisbella, but also to talk with friends. Antonina and the kids happily consented and told him he was always welcome. Mario had a new sentiment shining in his eyes and left that night as someone touched by blessed hope on the road to a new destiny. Okay, thanks, Raida. Sorry for such a long part, but there was really no place to, to, yeah, to break it. So I thought it was important to read everything, right? And uh, here um, we see Silva Mario going to Antonina's house, right? And uh, he feels something very uh, interesting that uh, he had a, a feeling that he knew her from somewhere, right? The, of course, uh, someone that he loved in the previous life uh, for some time, not to the end. So he still feels connected to her and 
he feels a lot of affinity towards her. Uh, also the children. Uh, one thing that is interesting here that uh, they find out that Antonina has been widowed. If we remember from when we were studying, uh, the first time we meet Antonina and she's doing the gospel at home, uh, one of the kids, I don't know, remember it was our old one, and he asked about the father that left them. Uh, they just say that the father left them. And uh, she asked them to pray for the father because the father needed uh, their prayers. And now we learn that... Uh, he died in an accident. Uh, and why this is important at that time, uh, of course, in Brazil, there was no divorce. There was only um, separation and uh, they, they couldn't remarry if uh, they were separated. Divorce was legalized in Brazil uh, probably like 20, 30 years ago. So if he hadn't died, Mario could not, uh, get together with Antonina, which is where this uh, is where we see this going uh, to to right by reading what's happening here. But it's very interesting when Antonina asks him for, to participate in the gospel at home, that we always uh, recommend everyone to do at least once a week, right? But uh, most of us, when we have visitors. Uh, when at, at the day and time of our gospel at home, we feel uh, embarrassed or ashamed, or we don't, uh, we feel uncomfortable asking them to participate in the gospel at home. And in this case, Antonina did not hesitate. It's time, it's the day, it's the time of the gospel at home. Mario is there, she invites him for the, to the gospel at home. And he is, uh, he agrees without really knowing what's happening there. He never had that. But he's feeling happy, so he agrees. And um, and when she asks him to open at random, again, we open the gospel, we recommend to open the gospel at home at random, <clears throat> but we know that is never at random, all right? We see that Clarencio directs him to open exactly where he needs to hear uh, the passage that he needs to hear which is make peace with your adversary while you are in the road with him. They recommend in the recommendation from Jesus on Matthew 5.25. Uh, go and make peace with your enemy before going to the altar and making the sacrifices. Go and make peace with your enemies. That's what Jesus recommended to us. And of course, why this is important, uh, we see here, right, the hatred that... Uh, Mario has for Zumira and Amaro. So the children are old and Henrique makes some comments on uh, how they learn what they learn and other uh, experiences they had in school. Um, <clears throat> and then Antonina talks to them about uh, how, you know, we must understand and sometimes we get offended, but many times we offend the others in turn. So we always need to forgive because forgiveness, again, is for ourselves. Uh, above all, it doesn't make it may not make any difference for the one that we forgive because he or she may not be interested in our forgiveness or may not even care about our forgiveness. But it's for our own uh, cleaning of our own souls that we need to forgive others. That's the lesson here. Uh, and uh, Mario becomes very uh, disturbed with all the comments and because he starts remembering uh, Amaro and Zumira, and he cannot uh, see how to forgive them. He thinks that he hates them both. He can never make peace with them. But he was enveloped by the good vibrations of the family that uh, and the house and the protection of the spirits there. So even on his hate, hateful thoughts, uh, they could not take over him because the energies surrounding him were making him reflect and think differently. Um, and he was attracted to this woman that uh, the moment he laid eyes on her, uh, he couldn't remember where uh, he had uh, known her or where or how, but he was attracted to her in a, in a very special way. And then he asks 
uh, if uh, we may should make peace with all sorts of enemies and uh, and she answers that uh, if even if the pre their presence are troubling us we should pray and ask God to give us strength to face these uh, difficulties and then he insists and if the hatred overwhelms us and uh, and she answers that no hatred can withstand benevolence and goodwill uh, where whoever we try to get to know will find forgiveness to be very easy. Uh, I think it was like Abraham Lincoln to, to have that said, um, I need uh, in order to uh, for to forgive my enemies, I need to to know them better, meaning you know normally we, have this hatred without fully knowing the persons we we hate. Uh, if we know, if we get to know them better, uh, maybe it's one way to to forgive them. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, she Antonina is understands his, his troubles in his heart, and uh, and she says to him, "Hands that you cannot wound." Meaning, she's trying to to help him overcome his hatred, and he leaves the house with a new sentiment in his eyes, and and someone touched <clears throat> by hope. Uh, remember that he was always feeling very unhappy. Uh, his mother was trying to help him when he woke up from the dream he had with Amaro, the experience he had. You know, he could not. Um, seem to to get over the difficulty relate difficult relationship he had with Azumira and Amaro and the hatred he felt towards them and this is the beginning of the preparation for him to be the nurse who will be taken to uh, the house to treat little Julius but this is going to be for our next chapter okay Elmo Anything here? A lot of uh, things here, right? Um, actually, no. I think the aspect of of forgiveness can be saved for the for the gospel according to the spiritism. Um, I, I saw you foot that you brought a footnote over there regarding family spirits. I think it's good for us to read that. So I have an idea what you're talking about and make out family spirit. But no, I think you covered everything. Yeah, familiar spirits link themselves to certain persons by means of size of varying duration in order to help them according to their power, which is frequently quite limited, however. Meaning, you know, we have our familiar spirits around us, but their level of involvement is not much different from ours. So the, their, their ability to help us is much more in, in giving us, you know, uh, hope, strength, encouragement but not ineffectively uh, assisting us in the troubles we have it's more in a uh, in the sense of uh, inspiring us to 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 choose the right path right yes. okay any ad additional questions here no okay so we stop here uh, thank you all. This was last month. Next month, we are going to do chapters 32 and 33. Um, Carol, can I do our final prayer? Yes, certainly. Thank you very much, John. Thank you, Alma. Thank you, everyone, for participating today. Thank you also, Sarita, for reading for us as well. Infinite creator and divine providence, we give thanks to be together again as brothers and sisters for our study of the book Between Heaven and Earth, our chapters being chapter 30 and 31, The Struggle to be Reborn and A New Struggle. There is a deeply connected bond between a mother and child during its formation during pregnancy. All phases of a developing human fetus will be relived during the early pregnancy. The vibration of both mother and the incarnating spirit 
or soul will affect each other mentally and emotionally. There may be many sensations and exchanges during gestation, depending on the vibrations and debt owed uh, to either the mother or the, or the father or both. The imbalances are essentially spiritual. Benevolence, goodwill, and forgiveness will assist in the process of reconciling past difficulties and reestablishing harmony, hope, and, and goodness. We give thanks to the spiritual benefactors and the good spirits for guiding and inspiring us today. May we receive the love, light, and peace of Christ within us and for our loved ones, our teachers, our directors, the counselors, the mediums, the workers, and all participants. We pray for inner peace and especially now for world peace and for those who are suffering in the physical and spiritual worlds. We pray for our center SGNY and all spiritual centers throughout the world that they may grow, prosper, expand, and be protected throughout the day and throughout the night. As we close, we humbly ask for safety and protection as we return to our family, friends, loved ones, and coworkers. May we remind ourselves to go forth as beacons of love, of light, of service, and charity, which is love in action. May peace prevail. So be it.